<laughs> well, <laughs> oh, yeah, beware the Ides of March or something. Golly, I've been trying to go live for 15 minutes or so here. <laughs> I don't know, you all. I don't think Facebook changed anything. I think I just maybe set up something different. Hold on, I'm trying to fix something. Um, anyway, sorry if you've been waiting. I apologize if you've been waiting. Um, if you haven't been waiting, <laughs> don't even worry about it. Oh my goodness, yeah, I don't know. I, sometimes it seems like I hadn't finished some detail. It wouldn't let me go live. I was about to do it on my phone. I like to do it on my phone because I rather do it on my laptop. This is easier because it holds still and I worry about it falling down and looking weird or whatever. Um, happy Ides of March. Happy Happy March! Middle of March. Here we are. I don't know where you are. It was 26 degrees this morning. I think it was probably a little colder in the morning. Last week it was 60. So we're we're struggling a little today, but I think it's going to get a little warmer. Um, but yeah, here we are. Halfway through the month. St. Patrick's Day on Friday. Hope you are having a wonderful day. Hey, Pauline! Ah, there's Pauline! Look, the comments are showing up at least. Okay, I'm doing something right. <laughs> Well, anyway, I'm going to jump right in since I'm a little late getting started. I want to talk today about power. Um, and I'm not talking about power over other people. I just power over your own life and your own circumstances. And, um, and how to get it, how to have it, how to be in it, how to wield it well, weld it, wield it, wield it well. Um, I think one of the worst feelings is to feel powerless um, in any situation. Um, it can be momentary, it can be um, for a prolonged period, but if you have a circumstance or a situation or a person in your life and you feel powerless to change it and it's not something that you like, or even if it is something that you like, ultimately I think when you feel powerless, you just, it is a miserable feeling. and so. I just want to talk about it today because I had a few things come up in the last week that have really got me thinking about it. One of them uh, just happened recently. I saw somebody had posted about, um, you know, one of these kind of struggle is real type posts, which I get them. You know, I didn't make it to year 48 without feeling a little struggle. And I think depending on who we are and how we show up in the world and what we're about, we, we have different kinds of struggles. And you sooner or later, you run into... Uh, probably a typical struggle that you hear about this particular one was a woman running a business and you know had young children and she was like that feeling of um, if my business is going well I'm feeling guilty about being a, a good mom and if my uh, things are going well with my family and my kids I'm feeling like I'm not doing enough for my business and you know I can immediately like oh yeah I can relate but there's something changed inside of me because I used to be like, yeah, I can relate. I can relate whether I, when I had like a regular nine to five or seven thirty four job or whatever it was, or when I had a business, you know, it was always like, oh, you feel like one doing the worst. And I had lots of conversations with people. And I remember my dad one time, um, when he retired, he, uh, he worked in the world of like cotton, um, production and, um, the economics of cotton and, he traveled, I believe it was in Vietnam, it might have been in Laos, and he was crying telling me this story because it was a story of a woman who had grown a lot in her farming and in her industry, in her business of farming, and I forgot, I forgot the exact circumstance, but then, you know, she was crying, speaking to him about how but she wasn't taking care of her husband as well or her children as well and the things in her home, and, and my dad cried saying, you know, this has been the story of women for so long. You know, that they always end up facing this kind of thing. And, and you know, at the time, it was very potent to me. And, then, of course, seeing your dad cry. And, and then also, my children were very young at the time. And these days, though, I have a different take on it. So I have a different take on it. Because I'm in a different place in the world. And these days, I feel like, yes, that is a story. And it is a tragedy. And if you were in that struggle, like, it does not feel good. It is feels like a rock in a hard place, miserable place to be. And then, but when I read that yesterday, I thought, yeah, and you don't have to live that story. Yeah, and that doesn't have to be your condition. Yes, and you can choose not to have that struggle. Like, that is a belief. That is a belief. Just because it's held by a lot of people doesn't make it true right? So, and just because you have the experience of it and then you're like, oh, that's true. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 
it's a truth. It is an energy, a story in the world, but it doesn't have to be your truth, your story, or your energy. Like you actually get to choose. And I had to make some notes because I really felt really strongly about this because sometimes these things serve us, you know, and I think there are first steps of like, um, as your life expands, as you, um, you create more like in your work, in your business, in your home, in a relationship, uh, if you're just dating someone, or if you're having a new experience with, with small people in your world or whatever it is, you're, you will run into your edge, right? You're going to run into your edge of experience and knowledge and ability. And then you, you may have some, some contrast. You may have some things you don't like. You may have some struggles. And then the question is not, you know, avoiding those. It's what do you do about those? So first step is awareness, right? Like you're aware, like, holy, my, you know, dang, that's hard. Like, that's not easy. I don't like it. This is, I'm feeling this pull, this tug. I don't know the answer to this solution. And I think that is so important to be aware that, okay, you're in a situation where you have had growth, you are experiencing some kickback, um, you're experiencing some things you don't like, but the key is what do you do next, right? What do you do next? Where is your power, right? And at first it does feel powerful. I think at first it does feel powerful to say, hello other people having the same experience i'm having like it's not about me i'm not a big mess up this situation isn't rare and hard i tell my husband this all the time i think it really irritates him to be honest um i'm like we're not the first couple to go through this situation <laughs> I, don't, I don't think he's impressed by my logic but it is comforting to me to say wow this is not unusual this is this is not you know we, we come together and we're like oh you had that too and i had that too and okay oh so it's nothing something inherently wrong about me incapable about me my dream is not too crazy my my hope for my family or for my workplace situation to be better is is not insane this is just something that happens right it's something that happens there's a lot of power in that and then the question is like what do you do next um what do you do about that story? Do you stay and live in it? Do you milk it? Like, do you really milk that problem? And if you do, where do you get to? And if you do, it's fine. Sometimes we have to really sit in it for a while, let it gel, milk it, be in it until we're ready for something different, until we understand, we have enough um, understanding about it. Um, but I want you to know that like, you always have the power to step outside of it. You always have that power every second of the day, even when it doesn't feel like you do. Even when it doesn't feel like you do. So let this be my encouragement to you if you have a situation that you aren't loving. And it may just be a small irritation, but it might be something like soul crushing. My encouragement to you today is you have the power to change that situation. Sometimes it does not always look the same, right? I always hear people talk about affirmations like, are affirmations good or affirmations bad? Some people love them, some people don't love them. I personally love them. You're not always in a place where an affirmation will work. And, and there's some keys and we can, you know, and I might talk about this on a future um, video, but also if we work, if you work with me, like that is something I really talk with. Like Affirmations have to land where you are, right? You can't use somebody else's affirmations. They have to vibe. It's like, um, it has to be close enough to where you are and, and the gap to where you're going has to be something you feel like you can get across, right? And if you can't, then, you know, then that affirmation is not going to work. But that's, that's another topic. But, you know, you have this power to decide how you want to move through. I had someone this week, over the weekend, she said to me, I was telling her something, I had some resistance, and I said, well, but I did this thing in the past, and nobody came, and nothing happened, and she goes, that doesn't mean anything, she says, you're making it mean something, and I thought, ooh, she's right, she's right, I did something, it didn't have the outcome that I wanted, I decided that it meant I couldn't do something similar or I couldn't be successful in a certain way. I don't know why when she said that to me, it, it's just jogged something in my brain, but I realized like, absolutely. 
Absolutely. I get to decide the meaning of a circumstance and an event. And I was, I was watching another video and I was looking at some stories that had gone on some interpersonal relationships between a, in a band. And, um, it occurred to me, like, you know, I could kind of feel into this. Oh, that's why he did that. And that's why he did that. And then I thought, oh, but that doesn't have to mean that, right? Someone, Someone can do something to you. Someone can do something terrible to you and you can be in that and you can feel it and you, but then you can decide what it means and you can change what it means. And it is so, so, so liberating to realize that you get to decide what it means for you and it doesn't have to mean anything. It frees you from things in your life that you cannot control. Like, what other people say to you, what other people do to you, um, how other people respond to you. You you get to decide what that means. And and this is a process of like, you know, I think some our brains work so rapid fire that a lot of times we create a story before we even know that we've created a story. Um, and so it, it takes some practice to be self-aware of like, oh, that didn't feel good in my gut. I don't like it. I'm going to make a big hairy deal about this and it's going to be the story of my life. I think I was remembering um, when I first became a mother and was feeling the challenges of working full time, wanting to like be there for my child, wanting to be the best I could be at work, feeling like I couldn't do either one. And I got wrapped up into some different blogs and discussions and one of them was this whole movement on like caregivers. And about how caregivers are not um, aren't paid well. I mean, you may have seen there's an example of like, and and this could be for a man for sure, but typically it is for a woman. But it's like you look at, say say a, a woman who has chosen to um, work in the home and like be primarily focused on like raising her family, right? And so if you look at the economic value of all the work that she does, which is like, okay, so if someone had to hire it out, right? If, if, if the dad had, or whoever had to pay for childcare, pay for a laundry service, pay for a cook, pay for someone to clean, like all of those things, like no one could afford you. Um, and at first that like really grabbed me. I'm like, that's right. That's right. Look at all the value I provide. But then I realized like that's awareness and find that, but then like you got to go to the next step because this one particular website I found out, it was just like, it was just this bitter, resentful, people need to do better for me, people need to pay me more, people need to acknowledge my value and worth. And the problem with that is, the problem with that is this, it goes right back to power. You have no control over what anyone else is going to say to you, do you value you, um, recognize. Like you can't control that. And so if you are putting your happiness and your validation and your enjoyment life on, on the condition of someone else doing something different, Good luck. That's a crapshoot. It's just a crapshoot. You know, you have no control over that. You have no power and you have just effectively completely given your power away. Right. Um, I, um, I, and we can be in a real illusion that other people, things, laws, whatever have power over us. Catch is this, like that illusion is not built in a day. It doesn't happen with one experience, right? This is for most of us, this has happened over a lifetime. These are stories we've heard from our families. These are experiences we had growing up when we were um, just impressionable and we didn't even think about trying to take charge of it, right? And so a lot of times what can happen is by the time that we're aware, we're feeling that someone is ruining our lives or controlling the situation, there's just so much momentum and there's so much evidence about it that you can't just say, oh, well, no, actually I'm in charge, right? You have to, you have to find a way to deconstruct that, right? You have to find a way to step outside of that and to reclaim your power. And it is a process and it is a habit. And this is one thing that a lot of people are a little unsure about. The way through it is around it. So it's never like what you obviously think that it is. Right. It's not just like, OK, I'm going to stand up and I'm going to take back my power. You can do that. But that is filled with a lot of resistance. You can see that 
in any uprising in any country in the world, right? Like, I'm not, yeah, when people stand up and they say, I'm not going to take it anymore. Like, I am all for that. I am a thousand percent for that. And that can be a really, really, really hard way to go about it, especially say you have like a military authoritarian government and then, you know, they have tanks and guns and you don't, right? And there's usually a lot of death and a lot of, um, you know, sadness and a lot of pain and suffering that doesn't have to be there. The way through it is by recognizing how you actually can take power back in your life and how you can influence the events of your life. Um, and it's not a typical thing. It's not something a lot of people talk about doing. Um, I did a meditation the other day. Um, it was a really interesting one. It was, um, we focused on like one cell in your body, like in the center of your body. In the center of my body always comes in about here. I don't know why. But, and it was to focus on that one cell and to be that cell. And it, I, I can't remember the details exactly, but basically in the cell, you know, if you think about an atom and, and if you look at any kind of um, quantum mechanics, like the vast majority of your cell, of your atom, when you get down to a small enough level, it's space. Right? It is space. Like we feel like this dense, complete, solid body moving about in this physical world, but are we are all space? And in the meditation, it kind of compared it to like being in a galaxy, right? Being like between the stars and between the earth. And I just remember feeling that expansive feeling and thinking, oh, I can choose that anytime. I can choose that kind of space in my daily situations. I can choose that kind of space in my daily interactions with people. And that space gives me room to, because I'm a kind of person who, oh, this is getting a little rambly, but anyway, I'm the kind of person who I don't, uh, I've never had a quick comeback. I always love people who like have a great zinger of a comeback. Give me 24 hours, give me 48 hours, I'll think of it. But in the moment, you know, what, what are the, um, what are the stress reactions like fight, flight, or freeze? I'm a freezer. <laughs> I'm just like, Oh, uh, and then if I have to pick up on, I'm going to, I'm going to do, I'm going to fly. But a lot of it is freeze. And so for me, when I have that space, I realize I have space to make a different decision. And that's where our influence is in like these little bitty decisions that we make. I was reminded of, I had to look it up. Let me get my phone. I had to look it up because I couldn't remember where the origin of it was. But you know, the story of as a story of like a butterfly flaps its wings somewhere in the world and it causes a hurricane, if you've ever heard that. So that actually has a super interesting background. It was math, it was a, it was math, yeah, mathematician and meteorologist. His name was Edward Norton Lorenz, Lorenz. Anyway, he actually talked about a seagull um, causing, a, wait, no, it was a seagull causing Oh, it was a seagull causing a storm. But then people said, like, look, to make this more understandable to people, you talk about a butterfly and a tornado because it's the same dynamic. But it's that a small disturbance in the air can be much time in the past, weeks in the past, can create a huge effect in the future. And it's really cool because that's like a meteorological fact. And people realize, like, it's actually a fact in everything. And that's why you see so much... Um, it's a, you know, an element of chaos, chaos theory. That's why you see a lot of times people talk about habits. Um, so whether, like if you're, if you've been someone who's uh, wanted to be get on like a weight loss journey or a health journey or, a, or um, you're growing a business or you're, um, I'm trying to think, learning to uh, play an instrument, right? It's your habits. It's, it's not so much, you know, like you see this, you have this big vision of where you're going, right? You know, you're going to get fit, you're going to get trim, you're going to get, you're going to play the saxophone, whatever you're going to do on stage, and then you're starting here. So what do you do? You, like, learn small, daily, doable habits, yeah, and they will get you there. And, you know, a lot of the journey of success is kind of the arguing back and forth. No, I'm not getting there. No, I'm not making results. Blah, 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 blah. But, but an interesting aspect of all of this, like, why does that work? Why does it work? It's because a small change in initial conditions can produce a huge change further down the road in time or in space. Um, and that is ultimately how we can take our power back is by making small awarenesses, um, small changes in our belief. 
being um, sometimes the change is as simple as I'm willing to see this differently. I'm willing to understand this differently. I'm willing to look at this differently. I'm willing to entertain the idea that I do have the power to control over this situation. Um, and so this week, I want to invite you to try that, to try that. If you have a situation that's that's irritating you, a situation that seems immovable, a situation that you just have tried everything and you can't do anything about, um, I want to invite you to uh, write it down, write it down, write down the situation, um, write down what about it is bugging you, write down your beliefs about it, and then try this on. Try it on and say, this can mean something different for me. This, this can mean something different for me. I'm willing to see this differently. I'm um, open to um, having a new meaning to this thing. I actually had this happen with um, someone. I, after after um, my experience over the weekend, I have, a, I have a situation where I just get sort of annoyed, a little bit offended by someone. It's not you. If you're watching this, it's not you. Trust me. <laughs> but, um, and I had been making it mean something really big and, and I had just been like in it and I was just like, I can't, I can't see this differently. It's just how I feel. I feel annoyed. I feel like they're not being considerate. They're not thinking of me, blah, 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 blah. Right. But when I had that awareness, I was like, Oh, you know what? I could, I could, I could have this situation mean something different. And so, yeah, I want to invite you to consider your the circumstances, situation, whatever it is, you write it down, write your beliefs about it, and then be willing to give it a different meaning. And more than likely, if it's really bugging you, you're not going to know what that meaning is. So it's not like you can go, this means I'm successful, right? Um, one of my favorite affirmations is um, everything I touch turns to gold. I love that saying. And when I'm in the right mood and kind of flowing with it, I can believe it. But sometimes I cannot, especially if it's something that I've been trying to affect a change in for a long time. And like I'm like, oh, everything I touch turns to gold. Like, no, it doesn't really feel that way. So most, if you're really heavy in it, you're not going to be able to be able to see it differently. But so I want to invite you just to be willing to and be willing to give it a different meaning. And then just develop that small habit of being aware and deciding that it can be for you and and let it unfold and see how it can be for you so and let me know how it goes as always I love to see how it goes for you and I love to hear about um, your experience with it and I also love to hear if it's like total junk you know if it doesn't work at all because um, I think there's so much value in everyone's experience so yeah and I also, oh, I've been, um, you might have seen some things I've shared recently. I'm really excited. I'm really excited to offer. I've been offering, um, I've got 100 consultations total that I'm offering for learning how to really feel good in life, to be happy, to enjoy each day. Um, and so if you're in a place of wanting to feel better about life, wanting to feel, you might be, I want to feel good again. It might be like, I've never felt good. I want to learn how to feel good. Um, it might be so and so long since I felt good when I woke up in the morning or felt good most of the day that I don't even remember. Whatever it is, whatever the situation, the circumstance that's keeping you from being there, um, I wanted to invite you as well. Just hit me up. Send me a DM um, and you can just say happy and uh, we'll have a chat. We'll have a chat, it's just a free consultation, a little chat about where you are and what little habit, what little change you can make. Oh, it might be a big change, but more than likely it will be a small one um, in how you can learn to, to be happy. Learn how to be happy. So yeah, hit me up. Let me know. I will talk to you next week. I hope you have a wonderful week and let me know how it goes with claiming your power back because I think you can do it. See ya.